Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city has joined Nextdoor, a private and free social network for neighborhoods. More than 100 Kansas City neighborhoods are already using Nextdoor as a kind of virtual neighborhood watch. This helps neighbors get to know each other and share recommendations on services or just talk about public safety issues. The city communications office, the mayor's office, and the police department will use Nextdoor to send messages about local news, safety alerts, and neighborhood services. This is a way for us to get back into that mentality of taking care of our neighbor. See something, say something, do something. Help a neighbor. Get in touch with a neighbor. Warn a neighbor about a problem. Help a neighbor find a child or, or a pet. Spread good news. If we have more neighbors talking to each other, protecting each other, supporting each other, we'll have happier people, we'll have less crime. And then what we really ought to do is we ought to get big signs that say, next door neighborhood, don't bring your stuff in here and put it up so that people who want to come in and cause trouble sit, know that if you go in there, your chances of getting caught are going to be much higher. That's what we need to do in this city, and I'm glad we're doing it. To sign up, visit nextdoor.com and enter your address. As a Nextdoor member, you only have access to your specific neighborhood site. This keeps conversations secure. You must also verify that you live in your neighborhood, and once verified, you can begin posting. More than 10,000 fans crowded into Kansas City's Power and Light District to watch the recent World Cup games. Soccer fans from across the metro came to celebrate in downtown Kansas City, and the crowd's enthusiasm generated national publicity for our city. It just makes me so happy to see the people of Kansas City bring back downtown. I'm just so happy for the Sprint Center and the Power and Light and all the development and everything the city's doing. The fire department will provide free continuous chest compression training sessions for local groups and residents. Continuous chest compressions, also known as hands-only CPR, is now the preferred CPR method. A training session only takes 15 or 20 minutes and covers basic heart safety facts, how to locate and use an AED, and how to administer hands-only CPR. Groups interested in attending a training session may call 816-784-9200 or sign up online at hoaheartsafe.org. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Summer is in full swing, so be sure to take advantage of these fun activities at your Casey Parks facilities. It's National Parks and Recreation Month. This year's theme, Out is In, encourages everyone to do something outside every day of the month to make sure getting out becomes part of your daily routine. Follow hashtag KC Parks on social media during July for ideas and activities to get outside, be inspired, and change your outlook. Visit kcparks.org for the entire Out is In July calendar of outings. Our official National Parks and Recreation Month celebration, Kansas City's Big Picnic, takes place on Sunday, July 20th, as KC Parks partners with the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art to host the biggest picnic the region has ever seen. The Donald J. Hall Sculpture Park and Tice Park will be linked to become a giant space for Kansas City to come together for an evening of fun family activities. Get all the details at kcparks.org. The world's most beloved musical, The Sound of Music, is presented at Starlight Theater in Swope Park from July 25th through 31st. This true story of the Von Trapp family in Austria has it all and features some of Broadway's most well-known songs. Tickets are available at caseystarlight.com. Kansas City Parks and Recreation is planning for our future and needs your help to determine priorities. Please visit our website, kcparks.org, between now and August 1st to launch the 10-minute survey and let your voice be heard. Your thoughts and suggestions are very important to us. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar. 
or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The KCPD, see, I'm already doing it, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is quite fond of using acronyms. And one acronym community groups often hear is CIO, which is Community Interaction Officer. We have seven. East Patrol has Jason Cooley. Community Interaction Officer position provides many opportunities for, for um, the police department to be able to, to help people. More times than not, it's just a positive experience and it allows us to engage the community, um, break down barriers, um, earn trust, earn friendships, and uh, just, just try to make communities safer. And it's about relationships, partnerships, and communication. CIOs uh, offer an opportunity uh, for direct engagement with the community that goes beyond just the typical call for service. Metro Patrol, John Trainer. I think CIO position is important. Uh, it gives the um, homes associations, businesses, uh, citizens uh, a contact person, uh, even to ask what happened on their block to um, uh, what can I do about crime in my neighborhood. We uh, bring things to the table, talk about them, work things out, problem solving. Um, uh, there's just a lot of people in the city that uh, want to help. Central Patrol, Jim Shriver. The, uh, the CIO serves as a critical link between uh, the citizens of Kansas City uh, and the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. In Central Patrol Division, I think we got some of the best groups uh, in the entire Kansas City metropolitan area. A uh, very close group. Uh, they actually you know, become family uh, instead of just uh, residents. South Patrol, Mike Hammer. It seems like each day there's new challenges, uh, different situations the community comes to me with. It, I, end up scratching my head wondering, okay, how are we going to handle this? How are we going to combat this issue that this group is encountering? Uh, one, we're out there in the community. We're, we're viewed as the officer friendly. Uh, kind of the liaison between the community and the police department. A lot of people have questions. They want to know how to get in touch with different units. Uh, they might not have any access or never you know, been in contact with them, like for them come to a picnic. How do I get in touch with this this group. I just kind of play the, the liaison. North Patrol, Paul Burkhalter. It's, it's, it's exactly what I wanted to do uh, since, I, uh, since, since the beginning, uh, to work with the community, to uh, deal with the issues at hand, and uh, absolutely love it. Up north, uh, we have great uh, communication with our HOAs, our uh, community at hand. Uh, the communication between North Patrol and the citizens is, 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 has been great. A good day when I don't get any complaints about speed bumps. <laughs> Show Creek. Rick Cartwright. It's very much rewarding. It gives me the opportunity to interact with the public and be that liaison between the public and what the department can do for them. I do think it's very important that the department have community interaction officers just because the title itself says that we are ones that work with the public and that we want to interact with them and address their problems and, and let them know what the police department can do for them and what they can do also to obviously help themselves. And finally me, Shelly Gaddis. We spoke with CIO Coordinator Captain Chris Sicoli. The, uh, the community interaction officers are vitally important to our department and to the communities they serve. They have to know the dynamics of each neighborhood they work with. Um, they have to know the dynamics of the division they work within. Um, they have to keep current on what's happening within the department and within the community. Um, they are the go-to person for those neighborhoods. We have a, a great mix between people that have been a CIO for many, many years to people that are just starting as a CIO. They seem to work together very well as a group. They share information. CIOs should never be used as an emergency contact. They are strictly an after-the-fact resource, um, either to find out what was happening in your neighborhood or to provide intelligence information. I think a lot of people, not only in the community, but also a lot of officers forget the CIOs have a lot of wonderful contacts in their neighborhoods, and they receive an awful lot of intelligence about who is doing what and where. It does take a very special type of person to be a CIO. You have to be somebody that is outgoing, that is willing to meet new people, that can work with very limited supervision. At the same time, you know, the department has to trust them that they're going to follow the department guidelines and, and put out the department viewpoints. I'm very pleased 
with the current caliber of CIOs that we have. Chief Forte often says relationships mean everything. As CIOs, we reach out to businesses, schools, faith-based organizations, home associations, and community groups. We keep the public informed on what the police department does and why we do it. We assist in neighborhoods setting up their block watch programs, we listen to complaints and suggestions, and we answer questions. Our connections range from the city council to state representatives and senators. People often say, where's a cop when you need one? Well, CIOs may be the easiest to find. The city will partner with the Raytown Animal Hospital to hold free pet vaccination clinics at the Spirit of Freedom Fountain and at Marlboro Park. Rabies vaccinations and microchipping will be free. However, pet owners will be required to buy a city pet license for $10. The next PIAC meeting will be held on Thursday, July 17th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center. This is your chance to suggest public improvements from the city's capital budget. PIAC is the Public Improvements Advisory Committee. For a complete listing of hearings throughout the summer, please visit kcmo.gov and search for PIAC hearings. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.